So here we are, we're going to Morpheus Trial. Hopefully <laughs> they'll let him out free tonight, today. I highly doubt it today. We have to hope. Should we set our, I think we should really set our expectations low here, if anything, right? Because we're, we're hoping that the judge is going to hear this brilliantly written motion about how Bitcoin is not money and go, Oh my gosh, you're right. Bitcoin is not money. Sorry, Morpheus, you are free to go. And everybody using Bitcoin is hereby exempt from all of the laws that come with it being classified as no. money legally. But uh, that's not what's going to happen, it's is Bitcoin it? Bitcoin to the moon. <laughs> 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 well, no, my thing is that what they're going to do is they already took away a lot of the Bitcoin um, arguments, you know, about yeah. Bitcoin. We were really looking forward to this. Of course, they don't want to play that game to where they let uh, Peter Steinmetz off and canceled all of the Bitcoin related and the conspiracies and all that stuff. Yeah, by and the now, way, if I may interject, for in case anybody's listening doesn't know that... Uh, the bigger case here that we hope to have implications and is not Morpheus, but his co-defendant, Peter Steinmetz, who's not in jail, but uh, Morpheus is being held on a felon in possession of ammunition in an apartment. He, he, that he, he wasn't has in. ammunition, so he must yeah. have had a gun somewhere or something, and right. where's the gun? And ammunition equals gun, so he should be charged for a gun. No, he, he should be charged for not oh. having enough ammo in Arizona. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not really too hopeful about what comes out of today, but we are going to court to bring attention to his case and make sure that people know that this is one with potentially huge implications for the legal situation with Bitcoin. So, Morpheus, Titania, Thomas Costanzo, we love you, we're coming for you, and uh, we got your back in court this morning at least, and I hope if anybody sees this that, uh, that, that you join the cause one way or another because protecting Bitcoin legally is critically important right now and uh, Morpheus and, and Peter's cases may be critical in the development of whatever the legal precedent uh, around Bitcoin is and of course we hope that there isn't one at all because Bitcoin should be free. Yeah. Hello. In the winter time I wear sweats and summer I wear shorts. That's it. <laughs> There's a bunch of loyal over there. Are they for us? I don't know. Is that? What do we have here, sir? The video camera? Uh, and what are we doing with that? Um, um, I'm a journalist. Unless you have something written what by the judge, you uh, can't bring those in. Oh, okay. Is there a place to check them? So is this like a, a secret courthouse where there's no there's no public recordings or there's no? Okay, so it is a secret courthouse. That's weird. I didn't know, I didn't know we had those in, in the United States. We need to go back. To yeah, we need to go back with the uh, cameras, apparently. But cell phones are allowed. I mean, no cell phones have cameras in them, right? Oh, shut up. Well, let's run back. We'll be, we'll be back. Hey, everybody. This is Adam Kokesh here at the Federal Courthouse in Phoenix, Arizona for the hearing today for Morpheus Costanzo. Uh, Thomas Costanzo, known as Morpheus Titania online, a trader here with LocalBitcoins.com who was rolled up about seven months ago in an extensive sting operation with multiple federal agencies involved and SWAT teams raiding his apartment centered around operating an unlicensed money transmitting business and related charges as pertaining to his Bitcoin business. So uh, I'm joined today by some friends of mine who are involved in this case in various ways. So gentlemen, if you just introduce yourselves very briefly and, and describe what your connection to this case is, starting with Ernie. Ernest Hancock, publisher of freedomsphoenix.com and host of Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock. Mor Morpheus Thomas has been a listener of the show since 03. I've known him for a long time. He was a big part from the beginning of the Ron Paul Revolution, sign making. He's uh, very active in the Liberty community, and Bitcoin was something that he loved because it didn't have paperwork. He hated paperwork, didn't want to do paperwork, no more paperwork. So he gravitated towards uh, local Bitcoin and doing uh, Bitcoin transactions. And of course, the man found him because he was out in the open. He's like, Yeah, I do transactions. Well, they built up 
all kinds of stuff. Well, we just saw today that they dismissed uh, just about everything except the actual money laundering charges. All of the wire transfer without a license or transferring money without a license, well, that's all gone. And they dropped the ammunition charges also that he was found with ammunition in his apartment. So now we're just down to money laundering. Well, now, now the fun begins. Everyone, I'm Tim Pichot, libertarianadvisor.com. And I uh, met Thomas in 2011 when I moved here. He was out selling pocket constitutions during the Ron Paul days. Didn't know him that well. And actually during a breakfast club meeting where I was uh, opening up for Mr. Adam Kokesh over here, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas came to me after the meeting and you know only for about five minutes and said, hey, you know, I, know, I really, you know, it seems like you could have a lot of potential here to understand Bitcoin, but right now it's like I think there's some things that you don't understand about it. And you know, it was real brief and he said, Hey, I'd like to, you know, give you, you know, a better introduction to Bitcoin. Let's have a time to get together. And that time was gonna be April twenty first. And so for those of you paying attention, he got rolled up on April twentieth. And so I had never actually bought Bitcoin embarrassingly. Coincidence? Enough. We think not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, so, and so really, I mean, it was right after that when he got rolled up is when I was just doing nothing but studying about all the different cryptocurrencies and when I started making my first purchase. And glad I did at the time, wish I did it sooner. But really, it, it sort of like lit a fire underneath me to be like, well, maybe there's something here. I mean, the government is that adamant about throwing this man in the cage who, from what I could tell, you know, couldn't rub two nickels together and probably could have been on maybe welfare, but he wasn't on the government plantation system. And that was probably his real crime of showing that you don't have to be you know, a slave to the system. And, and right now I'm, I'm about to open up some companies that are related to Bitcoin right now. And so what the definition of Bitcoin is, is very crucial to what I'm trying to do. And so I wanted to be here in support of Thomas, even though I didn't know him that well, I'd seen him around. He was always, you know, probably the biggest, uh, you know, foot soldier on the ground, whether it was for the Ron Paul movement, whether it was for Bitcoin. I mean, if, if you were in earshot of him, you were getting, you were going to hear about Bitcoin or Ron, or Ron Paul, whether you wanted to hear about it or not. Yeah. Ernie pointed out earlier this morning, man, they really screwed up locking him up and not putting him in solitary. Because now every single guard, every other inmate on his block, guarantee it, knows about Bitcoin. You know, right now I see the heavy handed tactics of the government. I see them using Soviet style techniques and it's like we've turned into the USSA where we're now entrapping our own citizens. And this was a man who didn't have any drugs, uh, you know, it was clean and sober and they just absolutely threw the book at him. And, you know, and, you know, there's people like, you know, HSBC Bank out there who gets caught yeah. laundering money for the Sinaloa drug, drug cartel and Eric Holder then tells them that they're too big to jail. If you look at what happened to them, nothing happened. They got hit with you know a few percentage, you know like like two months worth of profit was their was their penalty. And so you've got a relatively you know minnow here compared to all these financial crimes going on. And I just hate how the government's going after the little guy. You know that was one thing that the attorney, defense attorney, she made in her motions to dismiss that everything's been dismissed except for the I don't know four or five counts of uh, money laundering. She was saying what they did is they went and they heard about this money. Uh, laundering thing aspect of Bitcoin. They go to local Bitcoin on Craigslist or whatever. They find Morpheus. Well, they just targeted him because he was the most open e and evangelical about it. So they went after him and see, aha, he would do a deal with us if we said we were a Russian heroin dealer or whatever <laughs> and stuff. And I go, anybody that's telling me they're a Russian heroin dealer is freaking crazy and probably not anyway. I mean, you know. Yeah, everything so, they were trying to get him on that was kind of a guilt by association. Like, you once did business with someone who once did something you right. did business and, with. And, and, and I know Morpheus, thing. he just like doesn't care. Well, look, I, you know what, I, that's, that's not true, Ernie. I, I think. I, no, 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 he said, look, don't no, no. talk about that. Well, that's that's not, not, not just that, but I, I, I would go a step further here and say that as a good guy, if you said, I'm gonna use this money to do something to hurt someone, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this money uh, to commit Thomas a crime. Thomas has a crime. Not, not, not a, not a victimless crime. Not a government bullshit false crime. Like an actual crime. Uh, Morbius probably not only say no, I'm not going to help you, but he would try to stop them. If you say oh, I'm doing something to evade government's bullshit laws that I have a right to do, thank yeah, you for helping me. Yeah, the point me. that I wanted to make on, the point that yeah. I wanted to make on this point was is that the defense attorney goes, when you do this and you just target an industry or you're targeting, they're going, well, they didn't specifically just go after him and try and make, yeah, they yeah, specifically they go after anyone that they can just to make a case. Well, she made the point, you know, like, 
I don't know why, uh, Eastern Germany and Nazi Russia, whatever, you know. She started bringing up, this is not what we're about. Well, the prosecution couldn't wait to get up. Yes, it is what we're about. <laughs> yeah, We've been doing this for decades. This is how we do it. You didn't get the memo? So now after all this other stuff is gone, what are we left with? Is that the government will go after and prove a case and they'll make it up, they'll go and look for it, they'll entrap, they'll do all of these techniques to find someone breaking the law that they want to enforce, which is what? You're not allowed to transact without a permission government slip of you went to the blue pages and the white pages to get a permit. Uh, hey Ernie, you want to give Theo a chance to introduce himself? Well, I'm Theo Chino. I'm here to support Morpheus. I'm the one of the administrator of the Facebook page Free Morpheus Titania. And I'm also a Bitcoin <laughs> activist. And I'm trying to run the hashtag Bitcoin are not crooks. Bitcoin are not crooks on Twitter. And I'm here because uh, I met Morpheus 200 days ago, no, about 150 days ago throughout the glass, uh, the glass window at his jail. And the first thing he tells me, aren't you the guy who stormed the stage in Miami? I saw you there. Uh, I stormed the stage over the, the old director of the Bitcoin Foundation asking them why they're not supporting me on my Bitcoin fight in New York against the executive branch overreach in creating a permission slip system. I am against that permission slip system and I started fighting. And then I saw how the government entrapped people like Salman's in Portland, like uh, like uh, Peter, like uh, and like Morpheus. And so Morpheus is one of the most important cases, not only for Bitcoin, but like Ernie said, because it tells how the government is entrapping its own citizen, whether it's okay or not. And now that case actually is being liberated. Yeah, what's interesting is uh, Theo Chino in New York, he had 130 plus bodegas, little grocery stores and so on that were actually accepting Bitcoin. But what happened when Ben Losky, you know, did the uh, New York Department of Financial Services rule, you're not allowed, and they had a waiver and he goes, oh fine, you know, well then I apply for, ad denied. Well, this has been a case that was just recently dismissed because they did not want him to be able to advocate for, uh, we can do it without a, per or at least you're supposed to give us the license when you said you're going to for people just like him. Well, there's appeals that are coming. So Theo has been carrying the water on this thing for years from the beginning of them trying to regulate this. You know, Theo's been a, a, a really good guy on this and I know Morpheus appreciates it, we do. Absolutely, and I've known Morpheus for years. I've, I've been trading with him. I've been doing business with him. He's always been a great guy, and uh, you know, he, he turned me on to, to some important altcoins at some critical times. And uh, this case, you know, we were really hoping today that there was going to be a challenge on the issue of is Bitcoin money or about Bitcoin itself. And as Ernie pointed out, it, it really got to a more fundamental criminal justice issue. But as to the Bitcoin issue itself, and this is really an important takeaway for anybody in the Bitcoin space because this does answer uh, an important legal question about uh, the relevance of Bitcoin in, in these kinds of legal situations. They said it doesn't matter uh, whether it's money or not, it doesn't matter if it's legitimate or not, it is a mechanism that can be used for criminal activity and they will prosecute based on that. So like whether cash. whether they're going to be able to get these particular charges, maybe that's not relevant to the future of Bitcoin, but it is being recognized as a financial instrument that is capable of being a tool in financial crime. So I don't know. If it, but it, the it, next it, case, actually the next case where the charges were about money transmitting, now is happening with Bradley Stichted in, in, in Detroit. So in February, we need to be, in, as Bitcoiner, in close to Detroit, we need to be in Brad Stichted courtroom when they're going to decide whether Bitcoin is money or not. Well, I don't think they want to say it. They're going to drag us out as long as they can. I will be at every trial where there is a word Bitcoin. So tomorrow I'm going to the trial of this woman who supposedly has used Bitcoin to send to ISIS. Well, I don't want the Bitcoin to be associated with anything. So I will be there to tell Bitcoin has no flavor. Don't get Bitcoin dragged into anything that doesn't have to do with Well, that's not really what she did anyway. They just wanted the headline. They wanted the headline. And that's exactly right. They just associated Bitcoin. They didn't talk about the credit card company who gave us $80,000.
they didn't talk about the bank account who, where she put the money when she sold the Bitcoin that accepted that money. They didn't say anything about the wire company that wired the money. They just said she used Bitcoin. She yeah. used her it own wasn't name. That secret. Yeah. She used her own name and she put it in a bank account with her own name. So where is the Bitcoin in all that? And basically they want to scare us and I'm tired of being scared and I will go to everywhere there is a Bitcoin mention to say Bitcoin, we are not criminal. There might be some, but Bitcoiners are not criminal. Yeah, where, so, where, where's the trial for you know the people that in our government that funded the Free Syrian Army and El Nusra Front and giving them brand new Toyotas, giving them American-made weapons? All that was financed using the U.S. dollar. I don't think it was financed Alex. using Bitcoin. <laughs> there. No, and so I mean, you want to you want to talk about who's really <laughs> funding terrorism? I mean, probably one of the top guys is the guy who hails the senator from this state. You know who you know who also was the author of the National Defense Authorization Act. And John so, Songbird McCain. Now see, this has become a political thing. For those of us yeah. that understand what is really going on selective here. Selective enforcement. You, it, yeah, selective enforcement of anybody that wasn't working for the government, you know, or funded by them or approved by them or something. This is, this is a bad trend, and I don't see us continuing on this trajectory. It's going to change for a lot of reasons, especially when we get decentralized, not just money, but decentralized internet and communication, pirate communication, pirate money. I'm not on your grid. That's what they're fearful of. And when the technology gets to the point to where the judges and the courts and the law enforcement and the politicians and the corporations, it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter. If it doesn't have the ability to bypass what they think or will do, then it's the wrong tech. And that's the tech that I'm looking for, is the, you know, the technology that allows us to be free without them even knowing about it. All right, so as, so I, not I just, just want to wrap this up, guys, if you okay. don't mind. What, what's the uh, best place for keeping track of, of all these upcoming court battles around Bitcoin? Freedomsphoenix.com. Yeah, I have a lot of it, but I, you know, Theo probably know better where there's, well, you know, he's really keeping track I'm of keeping it. track. I have a website called abolishthebidlicense.com. And that's where I'm keeping track to anything that has to do with Bitcoin. I started a Facebook group called Criminalization of Bitcoin. And that's where I'm keeping all the messages supporting Bitcoin against the federal entity or anyone trying to go after Bitcoin. Thanks for that, man. I appreciate the work that you're doing in that Thank field. You. That's really yeah, important job, so that like, people in Detroit can go to that upcoming case in February that, and, and, and for all the other important hearings. Like today, we were here because Morpheus specifically asked to call attention at this hearing. Not that we were there to protest, but that he wanted the judge to know that people are watching and that people care about this case and that it's important. So I'm just going to finish with a little personal story about today real quick. A, kind of a confession, if I may. Um, because, you know, I was, I was the only one there who didn't stand for the judge. I thought, I, I really, I was disappointed in you guys. I wasn't I thought, in the courtroom. I thought, I thought that you were enjoying, or you weren't. You were at the end. You yeah, were at I the didn't end. Did I stand? Yeah, you yeah, did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was we the all only stood. one. I was we're conditioned, the only one. man. I'm we're not conditioned. Yeah, but that's that's not the important part of the story here because like I'm 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 here. I'm showing up to court, you know, and you know a lot of people sitting at home are probably going like, wow, you know, that's that's a brave thing that, that we're doing. I don't know for us this is not a big deal, but it, it takes a certain confidence and courage to say I'm going to go to court. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to challenge the authorities and show my solidarity with Morpheus here. But even in that courtroom, and, and, and I want to say, like, it's, it's not so much courage as much as, as confidence in, in our moral convictions, right? That we know what we believe in, we know what we stand for, we know that we have righteousness and justice on our side. And so I wanted to share that with the prosecutors. You know, we're, they don't say that you have to whisper, but everybody's whispering before the hearing starts. And I'm deliberately speaking, like, you, you, like we notice. Ernie, we know yeah, that. <laughs> Ernie's, Ernie's going, man, that, 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 that. I'm like, yeah, they really should feel bad about what they're doing. Oh, they they do should that. know. That you know, I would, my plan was I was going to go sit on it because I'm middle-aged suit guy. They think I'm one of them, right? You're so I was going to go side. sit on the other side, but there wasn't another side. <laughs> There's no one there. I was going to no listen one. in, you know? Yes, I, we, we were, you know but anyway, I was... It, I've never been those. to a courtroom before, and I've never been to a courtroom before, and then immediately I'm sandwiched in between you two. You <laughs> <laughs> were just talking super loud, so I had no idea what was going well, on. The thing super is, loud is in normal okay. conversational well, yeah, volume, so yeah. we don't get in trouble. I have a plane to catch tomorrow to be in the next courtroom, so I'm trying to make myself invisible, <laughs> except that I will wear this yeah, right. red jacket. But 
I didn't want to take the chance, but I would have joined you. No, but, but so, I, so, I, 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 no, but see, all I of this. I play the rule. All this, but I, I give you props for the courage of doing that. <laughs> no, this is my thing. You guys are, no, I'm not even getting to the point of this. But none of us could come I was, no, no, but what I wanted to do was sit behind the prosecutors and be like, hey, excuse me, <laughs> lady and gentlemen, I'm sure you're otherwise perfectly decent people here, but if there's no victim, there's no crime, and what you're trying to do is lock up an innocent man. And I mean, the first thing, like they, they start with this marijuana charge. Like okay. this, the, the prosecutor went up and, 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 and you know. Good 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah, 20 minutes of her time, I'm sitting there making the case in an arguing over one year is, it is, is it just maximum sentence? Is it this? There's this confused. He said, "There's this confusing word, maximum." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, maximum. That's it's such a confusing word." word. But it, it, 20 minutes to say we need to keep this marijuana charge on Thomas, and it's like, which had nothing to do with this case. You're yeah. fucking evil. You're you're trying to put a man in a cage for a plant that's that's legal and. and Half the country now. And he was like, are, are you insane? And, it's and he was in Washington D.C. And, and, and medically here. And, 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 and he, was, wanted, he was made illegal on the line. Yeah, and, and he I, was made illegal on the line. And, and I wanted, so the, I wanted to just, I wanted to confront the prosecutors and say, what you're doing is evil. You really should go home and rethink your lives. This is sick. What Going you're doing. And, yeah. and I think about, like, and I, I was able to step back and see, like, this this whole bigger picture that when when people are are violent or mm -hmm. angry it's it's because <laughs> they're they, frustrated they're, they're, they're suffering right and that's what i see the driving force behind government and we you know we we play this game where morpheus is like the sacrificial lamb and exactly. his prosecutor or his his attorney the defender has to go and and say well no really it's not this and, and we're arguing with these crazy people as if they're sane and and i think that the history of humanity evolving past government will be told as a story of a therapy session. You know, all the people oh, yeah. behind government, yeah, they got therapy and we're not doing the government thing anymore. They, they got their issues resolved, they got their love, they got their hugs, they got to talk their issues out, and they're not doing this sick, evil thing anymore. So, to the prosecutors, to the judge, to everybody involved, to the undercover cops, you know, get therapy so we can stop doing this, because this is, this is like- This is a waste of time. It's the most it's inefficient, like therapy session in the history of humanity. It happens to be the biggest one, but the sooner we get past it, the look, better off we'll all look be. At, look at Ben Lasky. Ben Lasky was Chuck Schumer lawyer in DC. And Wiener, you remember Wiener? Congressman yeah. Wiener? Look how sick it turned out Carlos to be. Danger. Carlos Danger. Carlos yeah. Danger. And they're all coming from <laughs> Chuck Schumer's office out in my district. And I'm sick of tired so of. So it's your fault. Chuck, you Chuck, Schumer, oh. Chuck, Schumer, <laughs> Chuck Schumer actually gave my graduation Announcement because it was supposed to be the other guy who got busted for the sex thing. Uh, uh, who's, who's the other guy in New York? The New York uh, uh, Elliot Spitzer. Oh, Elliot! <laughs> Elliot, <laughs> Elliot Spitzer was at my college the day before he got nailed and all that stuff, and then uh, then so the stand-in was Chuck Schumer. So I have to take yeah. back something I said there, or I suppose in my fantasy of confronting okay. these prosecutors, where I said, "I'm sure you're otherwise perfectly good people." No, the fact that you're doing something as sick and evil as, as, as what you're doing with with Morpheus shows that there, there really is something deeply wrong with you and, and you're probably doing lots of other horrendous things with your life that, that really require uh, you know a certain degree of self-examination I think that's exactly. true about uh, you know everybody who really drives the evil of government and to a certain degree that's the average American voter as well so I hope you'll consider that and thank you so much for watching this special episode of Adam versus the man from Phoenix Arizona thank you gentlemen Mwah. peace peace